Yes, hello, I'm Ken. Uh, and I, uh, we're in St. Luke's Church today um, because of the uh, echo, whatever they call it. I was born in York. I've lived in this parish most of my life. Um, I think I know it pretty well. Uh, as I say, I've been coming here since, um, well, since I was christened. I started in the Sunday school here uh, when I was five years old, and I'm still coming now at 95. So these type of things, we would never have dreamt in our days of this kind of thing happening. You were brought to church by your parents, and you, can't, you couldn't speak, you had to sit quiet. But nowadays, the younger ones have more freedom. Uh, they sometimes run up and down the aisle here. But we, we've got used to it. But I don't, I, it doesn't bother me, doesn't that? But uh, that's how life is going. Everybody's rushing about. Things happen quickly, overnight. But we just have to accept it. Well, I like any sport, provided it's live. I watch it on television. Uh, when I was a bit younger, for about uh, 50 years, uh, I played bowls, which kept me occupied. Uh, I enjoyed doing that, but at my age now, I can't uh, cope with it. I lived in this area, uh, in Upper Newbury Street, which is in this parish. How old was there when the war ended? Uh, it's a bit since now. Uh, finished in 1945, so I'd be 25. I was born in 1920. Rationing. Oh, I remember quite a lot about rationing. We were rationing with sweets and uh, so on and so forth. The food was uh, scarce, of course. Merchant ships bringing it over from America were blown up by the, uh, the Germans. Um, so it was a bit frugal. No bananas. Uh, we had other fruits, apples, strawberries, raspberries, that kind of thing. Uh, but it was difficult, I should imagine more difficult for my mother, who had did the shopping in those days. Uh, and of course we got adjusted to it, and we had rationing right through until 1950, which was a bit after the war had finished. So we, we got used to it. The, the older generation these days has gone through a lot of changes and we don't adapt very quickly. All the technology, etc., it's sometimes beyond us and we have to get other people to help. Oh, mum used to, my mother was a widow actually. Uh, my father had died when I was nine, and she brought my, me up and my elder brother. Uh, we used to have porridge, mainly, uh, and I've uh, had cocoa ever since I remember those days. I have it night and morning, so I've been brought up on cocoa and porridge. We're expected to uh, develop photos. If you go to Tesco, they've got a photo machine, but you can't cope with the buttons. But the other thing about uh, the difficulties is that we, we've gone through a lot of changes. 
the elderly people. Um, as I say, I was born 1920, and this parish then was really eco-friendly because Burton Lane only went just a bit for beyond where we are now. It was never right through. Uh, all, I've seen all those houses built on the estate round here, uh, and there's a, a road further on called Field View, and that was the end of Burton Stone Lane there. And Field View obviously was looking over fields. So from Bootham Stray up to Field View, it was all grassland. There was a farm there as well. Um, and uh, it's been a very difficult period right through because then the, the local council uh, bought the land on this side of the railway uh, from the uh, Roundtree Chocolate Factory, as it was then. And that's when they started building the houses which we now know as the Burton Lane Estate. Uh, so we had to adjust then to Burton Lane going right through like it does now. The railway bridge wasn't there, we had to go across a level crossing. And from this area, I went to Hawkesford Old School, which was when I was seven, which was quite a walk across. But our parents, well, my mother couldn't go with me, we were left to go on our own. And we had to go over the level crossing, because it was great fun for us if there was a train coming. We stood on the gates and you know, had a look at it. And then the gates went, would swing back after the train had gone and we would stand on them and have a ride uh, on the gates, you know, which was a bit of fun for us. But then, of course, uh, after the war, uh, the biggest change was decimalisation. Now, to you young people, that doesn't really mean a thing because you've been brought up with it. But we had to change from the other currency to decimalisation. And I think a lot of people, business-wise, made a lot of money at that time until we got adjusted to go into the prices as they were then. Because I can remember that we could get a jar of jam for two and sixpence. That's half a crown. But when they did the changeover, the price of that jam went up to 26 pence, all 26 new pence, which meant it was the equivalent of five shillings. So our income, obviously, it didn't stretch as far as it should have done. But that was the policy at the time that the government held. Um, and of course elderly people, even older than me at that time, couldn't cope with it. And uh, I'm cer certain that certain young, older people, they had money taken off them that they didn't realise because of the change in the currency. So that's, that's how it was. We were briefed about it on the radio and they used to say when you're purchasing something give more and get change but of course we were giving more than what we realised that we were giving things more or less doubled in price overnight but that's how it was I'm afraid so that was the, the main thing then we come on to metrication, when they altered the measurements uh, of things from feet and inches to whatever it is today, millimetres and centimetres and all that business. Uh, so it was a difficult time. But we got over it as we got over the war time, which wasn't easy. Uh, so, uh, uh, 
Because of things have altered now, as I said at the beginning, the electronics, televisions have even altered in the last few years. The younger people that have gone through that, when it's now um, totally different to when television first came out, we got used to that. But um, that's how life goes. Shopping today, well, uh, as I have to do the shopping for myself now, so that's my wife two years ago, uh, it, it's all hustle and bustle. Uh, you go to the big supermarkets, uh, sometimes the prices are so small on the, on the counters that you, you've got to get really close to it to find out how much this is and how much that is. So it, it's like everything else now, everybody's in a hurry these days. I don't know where they're going, I don't know where they'll go when they finish up, but I don't know where they're going. They're rushing about. For what? They haven't time. They haven't time to cope with the elder pe older people. It's, uh, it's just one big hassle now, the shopping and everything. So that's how life is, but the younger ones cope with it. Well, I would tell them to slow down a bit. Uh, they, they all seem to be rushing here, there and everywhere. Uh, lots of people are now in debt because they've overspent. They have credit cards, other bank cards, and they go out and use them. And they don't know exactly what they're spending until they get the uh, statement in from the bank. And then they find that they've overspent, so they can't afford it. So there's that much debt about now. My motto is, if you can't afford it, don't get it. Save until you can get it. So I would pass that on to the uh, younger generation. It's the same with driving in the cars. I've been driving now since 1938. And I find now that the younger people are in so much of a hurry. If they're in front of you, you don't know which way they're going because they don't indicate. They expect you know where they're going, but you don't. And so you, you've got to pull back until you exactly know which direction they're going in, which causes problems. <laughs>